In this video, we in this video, we're going to discuss a revolutionary solar cell that can transform the aviation industry as we know it. Just imagine yourself flying hundreds of miles to your destination without any fuel cost at all. And as the aviation gas prices soar, the time has come for the state-of-the-art solar cells that so far have been used only in space application to be considered for electric aircraft. These solar cells can generate almost double the amount of power than the best performing solar cells used in residential and commercial PV systems. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to inspire people towards sustainable air travel and provide you all the latest updates on the electrification of aviation industry. Subscribe to get all of our updates. We know that battery's limited energy storage capacity impacts on the electric aircraft flight duration and consequently the range. So it is logical to apply PV solar cells as a range extender. After all, it's not a new proposition. Solar cells have been applied on electric aircraft since the 1970s. In fact, the circumnavigation of the globe was completed by an electric aircraft that ran purely on solar energy back in 2016. This aircraft called the Solar Impulse 2 used monocrystalline silicon solar cells that were 23% efficient, meaning of all the light incident on the cells, only 23% was converted into electricity. But did you know that there are solar cells in the market that are 40% efficient? These are the multi-junction solar cells that are used in space application for powering satellites. They cost at least 10 times more compared to normal monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar cells that are used in our home solar system. Because of these high costs, they are either used in experimental defense system or used by the space industry. Note that the weight and volume of an item that needs to be sent to space, such as solar panels to power satellite, costs a lot. To give an example, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that is used to access the International Space Station costs $2,720 per kilogram for payload delivery. And therefore, using higher efficiency solar cells makes perfect financial sense for space application. It is not widely known, but there are several types of solar cells. Polycrystalline and monocrystalline solar cells make up more than 85% of the solar PV cells in the market, including residential and commercial PV installations. The problem with crystalline silicon cells is that they only make use of a portion of the light and discard the rest of the photons. For this reason, the maximum theoretical efficiency of crystalline silicon cells is just 33%. Then there are the thin film solar cells that are used in special applications where flexibility is required or extreme ambient temperatures are encountered. They are slightly more expensive but up to 30% efficient. The multi-junction cells are the highest performing solar cells because they make use of nearly the whole spectrum of the light. As the name implies, they have two or more solar cells stacked on top of each other and each layer makes use of a different portion of the light spectrum. From the ultraviolet to visible and infrared radiation, they absorb nearly every photon. The multi-junction solar cells have a theoretical efficiency of over 90%. This means they have the potential to convert almost 90% of the energy in light into electricity. In real life though, the maximum that has been achieved so far is 47.1% in lab condition. The maximum efficiency of multi-junction solar cells available in the market today is 40%, but the value of efficiency keeps on improving year by year. But how will the use of multi-junction solar cells revolutionize our existing electric aircraft? To understand the impact, we need to look at a couple of existing solar electric aircraft. The most famous of the solar electric aircraft is the Solar Impulse 2, which circumnavigated the globe in 2016. It had enough onboard energy storage to fly through the night, even when there wasn't any solar power available. However, in order to do this, the aircraft required very large wings that were covered with solar cells. The extra battery weight and the large wingspan made the aircraft sluggish. The maximum speed for Solar Impulse 2 was 87 miles per hour, but it cruised at just 32 miles per hour to maximize the energy efficiency. That is, it was slower than a car on a highway. Also, its wings 
were wider than a Boeing 747. It had a wingspan of 72 meters which made the turning radius of the aircraft very large. Although Solar Impulse 2 was able to run round the clock purely on solar energy, the aircraft was also impractical for real-life passenger or goods transport. A more practical aircraft is the Sunseeker Duo. This aircraft can be best described as a powered sailplane. It had the capacity of two people. Its maximum speed is 84 miles per hour. The onboard solar panels generate power with a peak capacity of 5.7 kilowatts. This aircraft has a battery of 8 kilowatt hour. The Sunseeker Duo also uses monocrystalline silicon cells of 23% efficiency. During cruise, it only consumes 3 kilowatt of power although the motor has a peak power rating of 25 kilowatts. The wingspan is 22 meters, making it suitable to land on most airstrips. The cruise speed again leaves a lot to be desired, although it is faster than the Solar Impulse 2. The Sunseeker Duo has a cruise speed of 45 miles per hour. But what if we use 40% efficient multi-junction solar cells on this aircraft? If we apply them to the Sunseeker Duo, then we can generate almost twice the power. So instead of generating 5.7 kilowatts, we can generate almost 9.9 .9 kilowatts of power. This extra power can be used to push the aircraft to higher speed during cruise while keeping the aircraft wingspan the same. So instead of cruising at 45 miles per hour with its higher power, it can go up to 67 miles per hour. Consequently, we can reduce the wingspan from 22 meters to 12.65 meters. This would still give us 5.7 kilowatts of power with multi-junction cells. The reduced wingspan will allow for a faster aircraft because of lesser parasitic drag. Using wing loading calculations, it was found out that with a reduced wing and with the same amount of power, it can achieve 59 miles per hour top speed. The Sunseeker Duo can easily fly more than 6 hours on a sunny day and with the multi-junction solar cells can cover a distance of over 400 miles and that too without any fuel cost at all. It has to be mentioned that most power gliders by design have a never exceed velocity of 188 miles per hour or 150 knots. The long and narrow wings bring with them structural limitations that prevent the aircraft from being flown faster. For this reason, aircraft designers are trying to come up with a compact wing and even a box wing power glider shape that has a lower footprint, sleeker design, but has a large area on the wings for solar cells to be mounted with enough power to reach 100 miles per hour. Also, by allowing for higher battery energy storage, we can increase the range and speed. For example, the German company Elektra Solar are developing Solar One that has a battery pack of 21 kilowatt hours and can go at a top speed of 93 miles per hour with a maximum flight duration of 3.5 hours. To conclude, Multi-junction solar cells bring new and exciting possibilities to electric aviation and with the potential of even more efficient cells, the future looks bright. And with this, the video is concluded. We hope you would have learned something from the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.